The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Hola, welcome to Open, the one and only live show, bringing the best of the Bronx, New York, and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host, y Café con Leche, every Friday morning. Let's take a look at what's coming up in today's show. First up, our Open Weekend Preview suggests some exciting events to attend, so make sure you have your pen handy. After that, we sit down with co-founder of Inspire Magazine, Essie Ofourier, to discuss creating a more positive society. Then we're joined by BronxNet producers who are using their talents to make films uh, to raise domestic violence awareness and urban community issues. And you don't want to miss the sports roundup with Bobby C. And finally, we close the show with a unique taste in our open order spotlight with rapper's delight, chef and host Chanel Caché. So stay tuned. All this and more is coming your way because now we are official open. Welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche, for the next hour. And you know, we are always inviting you to get social with us online. Tweet us uh, at BronxNet TV, that's with two T's. And make sure you like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Rina Valentin. You know, it's the it thing. That's tweeting and retweeting. That's what we're doing nowadays. So hit us up. All right. Now we're actually going to just dive right into all things to do with our open weekend preview. First, the Lunar New Year celebration, the year of the horse. Celebrate this popular Chinese holiday with costume folk dances and authentic lion dance, uh, traditional Chinese art workshops, and much more. That's on Saturday, Jan January 25th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Bronx Museum of Arts, located at 1040 Grand Concourse in the Bronx. And, of course, that's in New York. And for more information, you can email them at info at bronxmuseum.org. Next, Grounded Aerial. Ooh, contemporary and modern dance mixed with high-flying arts. How exciting. This event has emotionally charged choreography amplified into the air featuring dancers from Cirque du Soleil, Stomp, and Blue Man Group. And that's just to name a few. This is happening right here in the Bronx this Saturday, January 25th, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the Concert Hall at Lehman College, located at 250 Bedford Park Boulevard, West in the Bronx. And for more information, you can call 718-960-8833 or visit Lehman Center. Center.org. Last, we have the 1040 Lounge Artist Spotlight with Wayne Martin. Promoting fine art in the Bronx, join a lively Q&A session with photographer Wayne Lawrence taking place on Friday, January 31st from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the North Wing lobby of the Bronx Museum of the Arts, which is located at 1040 Grand Concourse in the Bronx. And for more information, you can email info at bronxmuseum.org. All right, and that is what we have for you to get out and explore, if you dare to get out. <laughs> 
That's right. We're here keeping it warm in the studio. And uh, we're just going to check in with uh, DJ Vince Bracey rocking some salsa this morning. <laughs> <laughs> salsa to keep us caliente. Yeah, I had to I had to mix it up today. How you doing today, Rita? Good. I'm just saying because, you know, it was like, brr, just yeah. to get here. Right? Gotta, gotta warm it up because it's it was pretty chilly out today. Pretty chilly out today. <laughs> pretty chilly all week. For the week. The entire week. <laughs> uh, I don't think, did we hit single digits or? Yeah, we did. We definitely hit I was home digits. though. I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I had to go out a couple times. But you did? I tried to stay. I tried to stay inside for the most part. I hear ya. I hear ya. But it's nice and warm in the studio. Definitely. Yeah, we oh, got thank goodness, under all these bright lights. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Feeling nice, bright, and warm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, today's show actually has a lot of uh, inspiring people yes. and inspiring magazines. We have uh, inspiring thoughts, inspiring films. Everything is about inspiration. And I just wanted to mention um, this also inspiring organization called Mind Builders that mm -hmm. actually works with uh, the youth. And, you know, in being in the arts advocacy era or area I should say I uh, just wanted to, to ask and actually share with you uh, well first of all have you ever heard of Mind Builders? Uh, the Mind Builders Creative Arts Center I have heard of them briefly uh, all I know about them is that they're located in the in the Northeast Bronx and they, they cater to teenagers I believe yeah. teaching them stuff about the arts and music and theater stuff like that and martial arts like and martial arts really. of the arts yeah <laughs> and of course it's you know to build their minds and their their positive minds and and also confidence and just give them a direction and have a purpose it, it, you know, and art serves as a, as a really huge form of therapy yes. a, a lot more than i think people realize definitely and it's really good for i think the teens to embrace that i was in an art program when i was a teenager and it, it helped me learn a lot about the world and the way people think. And like you said, it's also a great form of therapy. What kind of art? Uh, it was, I was always good at drawing, but they had me paint. Uh, it was for the, the Bronx River Art Center, actually. Nice. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I never, I never was used to painting, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. Okay, so what impact did that have on you? How uh, old were you? <laughs> I was about... 14, 15. It, yeah, I'm putting you on the therapy couch. I'm like, yeah, what yeah. impact did that have on you? It helped me to realize that I couldn't paint. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. I was really but good how at... how would you know if you I didn't I was try? really awesome at drawing. Uh, and I actually had kind of a love for sculpting, actually. Also, I made a few ashtrays and people and stuff like that. But... It was well, a lot of fun. You know, the idea is that you were young and you had somewhere to go and you were able to explore in a realm of familiarizing yourself with yourself Definitely. further, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so now you know you're not drawing isn't your thing, but just the, the fact that arts is a part of our life, you know? I mean, there's music, there's poetry, there's yes, writing, there's, definitely. you know, acting, there's uh, singing, there's just different instruments, uh -huh. there's, like, the martial arts, and Mind Builders actually offers this to teenagers. And, you know, the reason we're even mentioning them is because they just opened up a really uh, new, uh, great new location, and I, I want to acknowledge them, and I'm going to mention the address. And, and just the fact that our, our youth have somewhere to go mm -hmm. to actually use as an outlet to basically work out whatever it is that happens when you're in those those teenage years. Right. <laughs> I know I wasn't the easiest to deal take with. Take it out on the paper, guys. Yeah, take it, take out, it the out on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Explore internally, uh, but of course, don't hold on to it. You know, this is about releasing it so that it isn't suppressed. And you know, you work out anger issues and all kinds of other stuff. But um, we love mind builders, and we've had them on the show a couple yes. of times, and uh, we're acknowledging the fact that they're out they're working for us with uh, the next generation for the next generation and with that said I just want to give a shout out to Vince Bracey Ow. rocking the salsa you rocking the salsa for the rest of the day I'll right? put some more salsa on, yes papi que me caliente okay and uh, and to also I just want to acknowledge uh, once again Mind Builders a new location is 3415 uh, uh, Olinville Avenue and that's in the Bronx and if anybody's interested in obtaining more information you can call 718-652-6256 or you can email E general manager at mindbuilders.org. And uh, the other thing I, I want to acknowledge is uh, just being a parent, you know, and being a parent is uh, a responsibility within itself. And although we have to take a quick break, uh, you know, I, before we go, I, I wanted to just, you know, take a moment to remember the, the life of, of the young boy that, uh, of Avante uh, Okindo, um, who, you know, I'm, I'm a little stuck. 
lost for words because, you know, to hear that your child's body parts are found is, is, is truly, you know, devastating. And so our, our thoughts and our, and our prayers go out to his family and all his loved ones. And uh, we just want to acknowledge him and send them peace and light. All right. We'll be back uh, with more of your favorite live show after this. Don't go anywhere. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Uh, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Start a new check. What did I do? Okay. Wow. That is so weird. Hey! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh. Hi! God, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so nervous. Gia, you're so big. Come closer to the camera. <laughs> Wait, now you're in my face. So good. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. And you get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen. And I am your dividend. Hello, welcome back to Open. Our next guest is the co-founder of a magazine dedicated to transforming society's view by increasing awareness on having a positive outlook regardless of circumstances. Please welcome co-founder, owner of Inspire Magazine, Essie Ofurier. Hello and Hi. welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. That was a mouthful, right? <laughs> I mean, that is what the magazine yes, is about. Pretty much sums it all up. In a sense, yes, right? Definitely. Okay, so, you know, I just want to open up mm -hmm. by sharing, uh, showing uh, some of the the actual hard copies because I want people to see that the magazine is actually spelt with the word E and um, that's not technically the way you spell inspire Correct. so i just was wanted to share with everyone why you chose to spell it that way well we pretty much we wanted to be something different um inspired stands for enlightening newsworthy subjects providing inspiration and real entertainment so it's like it's such a broad genre in so many ways that we can reach out to people or people can reach out to us so we decided to go with that name so we make people think make them inquire and make them feel like they can also be a part of it so how long has inspired been on the shelves as, as a sense of speaking because it's actually technically an online magazine Correct. right well technically um we published our um first issue in october of last year but we've basically been doing the information doing the research you know trying to get the word out for the past two and a half years on our own myself and two of my partners who are actually in north carolina now your, your partners are in North Carolina. Yes, they are. Okay, you know, that's very interesting mm -hmm. that you would say something like mm -hmm. that because, you know, nowadays you can actually operate as an organization, as a company, mm -hmm. and live in different parts of the un yes, United States. Yes. Now, how does that work for you guys? Well, um, besides the fact we already are friends, we basically communicate every day. That's one of the most important things in running any business is to make sure that you're in constant communication with your partners. We have meetings every week. Um, we communicate on Facebook. We communicate on Twitter. We text. So it's just a matter of knowing your place knowing your role and knowing when you have to communicate with each other. Okay, so how do you choose the topics that go into the magazine and how do you do that amongst each other being in different parts of the United States? Well, it's pretty interesting because sometimes we go based on our personal experience where uh, my partner and her husband, they're married, they have four kids, they have their own issues and their own struggles. I do as well as myself, I'm single. So sometimes we base it on our own personal experience or based on what's on the news. You know, it's a lot of negativity so we try to counteract, counteract that with to make people feel Think, to put them in more of a positive state of mind rather than being sad and, oh, you know, have that 
have that negative feeling. So we just base it on what we want the world to change and especially what we want to change in media. So uh, I'm just pulling up this magazine uh, again because this cover has a woman who actually had a vasectomy, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And um, that's bold, right? Mm -hmm, definitely. To have an image of a woman uh, topless with no breasts who obviously went through surgery, who mm -hmm. obviously... Uh, you know, is a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. Well, we call her breast cancer thriver because she's, you know, right now, uh, Maxine, um, it took so much courage for her to do that. And we were actually the first. There's never been a publication that's ever done anything like this. So we chose to go bold and we chose to make people think like this is what women go through every day. So this is the real issue. So we wanted to give it to you raw. We don't want to sugarcoat anything. So it was really a powerful issue. We got a lot of feedback. We've got a couple of mentions in the Huffington Post in two different genres. So as this being our launch issue, it did hit a lot of people the way that we wanted it to affect people. You know, but the beauty of what you're doing mm -hmm. is that instead of uh, staying with the, the the actual stimulation that mm -hmm. most media does, which is like, okay, a topless woman with big, exactly. beautiful breasts would have been <laughs> like, ah! Yes. Right? It's mm -hmm. scandalous. And yeah, it, it, this still loans itself to scandal mm -hmm. in another form, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's thought-provoking mm -hmm. and uh, educational at exactly. the same time. Exactly. That's what we want to do. Um, we know it's hard to engage people to read at that. You know, people like to just look at pictures, so we wanted to get that shock feeling, but like I said, it's, it's a real eye-opener. Thousands of women go through this every day, you know, so it's something that's very important, and we chose to, you know, uh, start our first issue with that type of mindset to let people know what we're trying to do. So you're right now online. Correct. And um, you're doing very well. Yes. You just uh, got your January of your issue, <laughs> yes, yes. which is awesome. Definitely. And you got hard copies. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so is this on shelves? Actually, we're working on um, getting our publication distributed. Right now, we're being distributed through MagCloud, which is basically they uh, they offer us all the services we need until we can be our own publisher. So, you know, we have subscribers. They go online. They um, subscribe to MagCloud. Um, you can order a copy of our magazine. You get a print copy as well as a digital copy online. So what are your subject matters uh, primarily? Primarily, we try to touch on everything, um, health issues, um, self-awareness, awareness issues, talented people who are in places where they can reach others because they got there for a reason by looking up to someone. So the main focus is to try to reach people in the masses, hit, a, hit people where they can understand and where they can relate to. So it's really no one or no subject or no topic is going to be uncovered. Right. You know, and you're from the Bronx, yes, right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, we got to acknowledge that. <laughs> and, and being urban, uh, mm -hmm. there's this thing that comes with like the bad side or like just being stimulated with like just even with what's what happened with Justin Bieber no. you know I know I, I, I swore I wasn't going to say it mm -hmm. I, was, I was like I'm not going to say his name because he gets enough publicity he mm -hmm. doesn't need our publicity Definitely. however the, just the fact that that's massive right mm -hmm. because here's this young kid who obviously got famous too soon mm -hmm. or whatever the case is nobody really knows what the deal is mm -hmm. regarding the prescription pills but the fact that and the alcohol <laughs> the combination but the point is is that uh, you know there's something wrong there mm -hmm. right there's something bothering mm -hmm. him uh, and he's self-medicating mm -hmm. or whatever. I don't know because we don't know if he's self-prescribed but obviously we all know that you're not supposed to mix exactly. alcohol with pills, right, right? right? And so the young kids of our gen, mm -hmm. well, you know, of our generation. We're still young. I uh, know, I know, I know, I know, I say it all the time. <laughs> Wait, they're drawn to that mm -hmm. before being drawn to something that is actually going to transform their lives. Mm -hmm. And so here you are designing a magazine Mm -hmm. That's not publishing the Justin Bieber's mm -hmm. or um, the Miley Cyrus, mm -hmm. who is like, come on. I mean, but you know what? Even if we were to uh, um, publish that, it would be somewhere in effect. Is how is this? How do you think other children or other kids your age are going to look at you like this? This right. is the point we're trying to get across. Maybe he is going through something. Let's get him some help and let him speak about that. Right. So if someone else is in his situation, they know that's not just them. They know what they can do to better themselves. And the one thing I, I think is important is to know it's not just you. Right. You know, because a lot of people feel like it's just them going through it. But no, if you have support and you see other people and you're able to read off of someone's story, you can be inspired yourself to do better. So even in that context, someone needs to sit him down. He needs to come to an 
Inspire. Uh, we need to have an Inspire <laughs> interview with Justin Bieber and see what's going on. Like, what is it that's making him do? What does he feel that's right about what he's doing? You are a voice to so many young individuals out there who are lost. Let's use that for a positive effect rather than, you know, it's cool to hang out, drink, and drag race. No, it's not. What's more cool is to go to school, get educated, and find your passion and find a way to give back to your community. That is what's more important. Right, beautiful, and beautifully sad, you know, because, mm -hmm. again, I, I brought up the, the Justin Bieber's and the Miley Cyrus because they're out there and they're mm -hmm. making money off yeah. of you guys paying attention to them. Mm -hmm. And the, the truth is, is, you know, there's an authenticity that, that really needs to be acknowledged in, in, in our society yes. that's not being acknowledged. It's being sugarcoated yeah. like it doesn't exist at yeah. all. Yeah, it's true. yeah, and so we thank you, Essie, mm -hmm. for making this your life passion. Yes, to making sure, like, okay, if Justin Bieber gives uh, Essie a, a call to Please do the cover of Inspire, <laughs> that you know she's going to tap into what's going on, what's mm -hmm. what's really going on. Exactly, that's what we're trying to do. We don't want to give you the general, you know, the interviews that you're used to seeing. We want to tap into the deep core of the person because that's what really matters about all of us is what we have inside and what we want to show to other individuals. So we need to show that more, more positive, more progression, more enlightenment. You know, we're, we all have it. You know, it's not like no one doesn't contain a positive force inside of them. It's just they don't know what opportunity they have to bring it out. So we're trying to be a voice. We um, definitely want people to reach out to us. We want people to let us know what's good that's going on in their community. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, I love the Bronx. I rep the Bronx. This is where I'm from. I want people to know where I came from and that I'm positive. You know, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to make a movement. I want more people to understand that. I'm normal, just like everybody else. I went, you know, I went to a regular school like everybody else. But my passion as I gotten older is to try to be better. And I want other people to see that so they can relate and be like, okay, if S did it, I can do it too. Nice. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank, Thank you, you for so being much. here with us. Mm -hmm. SC Afurie, mm -hmm. Inspire Magazine. Mm -hmm. Once again, I want to thank her for being here mm -hmm. and, and enlightening us. Thank yes. you very much for sharing your vision. Mm -hmm. And for more on SC and Inspire Magazine, you can go to inspireusall.com. Go to Inspire us all that's with an e.com all right we have to take a quick break but there's lots more on the way so stay tuned you can Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the pool? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. The newest movie, Chicken, uh, a movie created by some of Bronx Nets' very own. Please welcome Vera Edwards, Princess Lenita, and Ricardo Cordero to the show. Hello and welcome. Hi. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so shall we begin with you, Vera? Sure. <laughs> let's begin with you, Vera. Let's let's talk about your role in, in this uh, production as well as your time here at Bronx. You've been here a while. <laughs> yes, I have been. How many um, years have you been here with us? I think like, 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 six, like six, six, seven, <laughs> like six or seven like six, years. Maybe. I started my son here at BronxNet. Nice. Uh, uh, just to make it very quick. Uh, my son at the time was 16, and my other son was uh, 17. I'm 15, I'm, yeah, he was 15. <laughs> and, um, you know, I have five children. So uh, I had three boys, and they're right behind each other. So I didn't want them in the street. So Ricardo was a uh, little, little something in school. So I had to, you know, give him something to do. So I paid for the classes. Uh, he got to speak to... Uh, what was your professor's name? Um, Roger Giles. Roger Giles. Roger and, Giles. Yeah, and he, he took him on and he taught him how to work a camera. And because he was in high school and everything, I had to learn the camera myself to pick it up. You know, he was young, so I didn't want him to. But Ricardo started off with a show called Streetline, and the rest is history. 
I love it. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing that because we were just sharing, you know, taking the kids off the street with mind builders and boom, we took the kids out, out of the street or wherever you were dealing. Nah, I don't know if you nah, were on the street. Nah. No, but mommy said you were a little challenging. No, I mean, but, but like challenging, like, like bad He's behavior already, stuff, you know? Yeah. Not like, not I was like always at the school. Activity stuff, yeah. but, I was know. always at the school. Nah, nobody said criminal. Yeah. Yeah. The point is, is that she brought you to Bronx now and now this is you yeah. guys home, which is awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at you getting all defensive. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I didn't say it, mommy said it. <laughs> nah, I meant it too. Oh, man, there you go. This is another story right here. Another story. Okay, well, you know, thank you for sharing that and, and thank you for being here with us. And, and your uh, association with this film? Yes. Um, I met Vera in 2009 um, at my Stop the Violence event that I coordinate. Um, and she. Um, asked me to uh, be interviewed and then I became the host of Streetline and I've been hosting it for six, seven years and after the year that I've been the host for Streetline, she granted me my own t television show which is called Princess, Princess Lenita on BronxNet as well and so we've been a family, you know, That's we nice. became a big family and she uh, came up with an idea to uh, start doing movies mm -hmm. and I was like great go for it and she actually had me to be one of the main artists uh, nice. main yeah main actor, of, yeah. of the, the actual film. film yeah okay so Ricardo we know that that's your mother yeah. <laughs> <is> your mom. <laughs> <laughs> share some of your other roles with this film and in um, Streetline as well. Uh, well, I'm the director of both. Um, you know, it, it's kind of weird be, even being... I, you know, it's not honestly. weird to me for some reason. I kind of knew you were going to say you're yeah, I mean, the director. You know, I mean, it, it's just weird because, like, I feel like I should be over there, you know, filming this. Oh, right? oh okay. like, That's what I meant, like, oh, okay, okay. But um, it, it's been a great experience, um, you know, like, the movie was shot in uh, 14 days, right? 14 days. 14 days. Um, and it was edited within a month and a half. And I was in school, you know, I edited the movie. How old are you um, now? 21. You're it, 21, and yeah. so you've been here since you were 16? Yeah. So, 15. Oh, 15. 15, I'm 15. Saying. <laughs> See, I keep forgetting. You know. <laughs> so you're like a director since you were 15? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it's kind of, you know, always was busy and stuff like that. So like the movie was edited within a month and a half. Um, I was, you know, I was still in school. I, had, I was taking up six classes. So it was kind of like back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, it was work in school, then work home, you know, it's all this extra stuff. So, I mean... Always work. Yeah, I mean, so it was, it, it was great. It was great. So no time for play? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All work and no play. The, yeah. Well, you know, you yeah. play hard, you work hard, then you play hard later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it's all good. Mom yeah. taught you well. She keep you busy. Yeah, always, always. Um... In a positive way. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's the theme for today. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. So... Now, uh, not a not so positive note, but yet a positive note because obviously you're doing what you're doing to bring light to the situation. Uh, just share a little bit about the storyline of Chicken and uh, what inspired you guys to even bring that topic out to the forefront. I want to start off because sure. it, was your, it was your idea. Yeah, well, um, um, one thing is uh, I noticed that everyone likes reality shows and um I would watch, uh, well, I, I wouldn't watch it, but I've heard people like on Facebook and they would talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that is scripted. And, um, and I got tired of hearing about rich people with poor problems. So I decided to make a, a reality movie about poor people with real problems. Right. So um, in the South Bronx alone, there's so many children in, in uh, foster care and no one's addressing that issue. They're not addressing the uh, 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 mental, physical, emotional, financial uh, abuse that a lot of uh, families go through because, you know, most of the, what happens is, is in the projects. So I decided to write a script. It took me four days to write the script. And um, we, uh, uh, myself and Ricardo, Ricardo kept saying, Mom, when are we going to do this? When are we going to do it? So, uh, and Artie Cordell, he's another one, the main character, he, he, t he took on a challenging role because he had to play the bad guy uh, in the movie. Right. And um, they kept asking, let's do it, let's do it. We had casting calls and we had uh, casting for the crew. And therefore, after that, we went straight ahead, shot it in 14 days, and we had to do a reshoot 
And thereafter, we put it in the Mish Theater, sold out shows, et cetera, et cetera, and went on. And it wasn't even fully edited. Wow. And everyone loved yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't really fully, fully, like, edited to, to the, you know, the neatest, you know, finished form. It was actually just kind of considered still being a rough edit, you know, but uh, everyone loved it. Everyone loved it, so... So I'm yeah. just gonna speak to Princess just um, from the inside because you guys are on the outside, right? And I just want to know what that felt like for you. And I mean, you're in the inside too, but I'm technically, and she was one of the characters. And I was just wondering, like, as a character, what what that felt for you to experience this, even though it's scripted, this reality based truth. Well, um, when I read the script. <clears throat> Um, I said that I can relate because I've been in relationships and I've seen abuse, abuse kids in the projects and things of that nature. So it was easy for me to get into the character because I can relate to that. You know, I've been in an abusive relationship and I gotten out of it and, you know, I made something positive out of my life. You know, I didn't get discouraged and, you know, stay in the domestic violence um, relationship, you know, so it's positive and it, it, it gives a, a message to those ones that are going through it, you know, speak out, you know, go out, get help, you know, get out of that relationship because it's not good for you. Absolutely. Find someone that loves you and cares about you and that will take care of you. Or love yourself. Or love yourself, right? <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. I'm loving that. myself. I, you know, I always tell my daughter to, you know, you have to love yourself in order for someone else to love you. And so I learned to uh, get into myself, learning me first, right. and then going out to the world and helping others to do the same. Absolutely. And you're doing a wonderful job. And congratulations Thank to you, you. on I your hosting it. gigs and, you know, being in this film. And, and so where is the film going from here, Ricardo? All over. You know, it's basically all going all over. Are you putting it in the festivals? Um, that's one of our goals. That's one of our goals. But we want to basically shop it all over the country, basically. You know, who's ever willing to pick it up? Is it, is um, it, can people screen it now? Um, only at the theaters, at yeah. selected theaters, um, only for the simple fact that, uh, uh, to let you know, the script, the, the, the movie was actually just a script. And right. we tried to shop it around, but no one reads scripts anymore. Right. So you give it, like, if I was to give you a script and say, hey, read this, or you would probably toss it. So myself and Ricardo, we decided, like I said, to film it, and, and it was called a script screening. You know, and, and hopefully that directors who comes, you know, just to see our own personal uh, film, they will say, yeah, I want to pick that up. You know, I would like that. But, you know, so far I have gotten a lot of calls. I have gotten a lot of calls. I think what you guys are doing is so amazing, and I applaud you, oh, like you. over here, yeah, for being yeah. such a positive representation of BronxNet and, and, you know, domestic violence awareness. Yeah, by the way, it was really by the way, uh, uh, half of the staff is all Bronx Net. Yeah, it was uh, like a Bronx Net reunion, amazing. Vince nice. Bracey is in it. Vince yeah. yeah. nice. Bracey. Bracey in the yeah. house. Yeah, yeah. 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 He played Bird. He played Bird. Oh, he played Bird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chaz Green played Spank. Yeah. A lot of people. All right, so if anybody across. wanted to find out more about the film, where would they go? Um, uh, well, they can check the YouTube ca uh, channel, Streetline uh, Video. Uh, Streetline TV. They can also reach me at three four seven three seven one seven four five two. And um, wait, wait, can, wait, wait, what times can they see Streetline? And what channel? Um, on Streetline comes on Sundays um, um, at eight o'clock on Channel sixty eight. And Princess Lanita comes on Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Channel 68. Nice. And Living and Learning with Quasi is another show of ours that we, we produce uh, that comes on, I forgot, Wednesday <laughs> at 6.30. It's a learning show, but we, we won two Beta Awards here. Okay. Well, yeah. congratulations yeah. on that, too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is so yeah. awesome. I love yeah. it. Thank you so much for coming by. Is there anything you want to say before we go, Ricardo? Oh, no. They pretty much said everything. You know, um, we have some upcoming projects that we're working on now, but, you know, we can't disclose them yet. So just everyone. Another movie. And we have another movie we're working on right now. We just did one audition for it. Um, we're going to try to do another one. Um, and just be on the lookout. Awesome. And we'll just have to have you back on. All right. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. All right. Thank you. All right. You guys, stay tuned. We uh, got to take a quick break. But the Sports Roundup with Bobby C is up next.
So you, you heard of the Chewbacca fish? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chewbacca who? Well, yeah. you heard of the Chewbacca fish, haven't you? I, uh, yes, I did. Okay, yeah. and can, just so the people at home know, describe it real quick for us. Uh, describe what? But a fish that flies out of the water, like almost like a rocket. It goes like 12 feet in the air. And then what happens is it comes back down before it hits the water. It like flies into people's neck and like starts biting you in the neck and in the face. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If it's out there, I'm going to catch it on camera because I've been out here with, with, my, with my camera for years. You know how the Chewbacca fish works? What happens is it, it shoots it like rockets out of the water, like five feet in the air. And then as it's come, it ju exactly, it jumps. And, and then what happens, like five feet in the air, comes down, you know, right before it hits the water, like it like does a psych, and, you know, one of these moves and flies into your neck and starts like biting you and stuff. Nah. They don't, they don't have no fish like that out here, do they? Yeah, it's the, the Chewbacca fish. That's yeah, what they have it out here in the Bronx? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And then what happens is right before it comes and hits the water. Yeah, he died to hit somebody. Exactly. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Matchup for the New York, New Jersey Super Bowl is set and now less than two weeks away with Seattle and Denver moving on. Although I had New England and San Francisco at the outset of the playoffs, the Seahawks and the Broncos followed through on what many speculated at the outset of the season, proving that more than likely they were indeed the best two teams in the league this year. Seattle's defense led by Richard Sherman edged the Niners last Sunday and the powerhouse offense of the Broncos dominated the Patriots as Peyton Manning outdueled Tom Brady in the quarterback pairing everyone wanted wanted to see. Our Bronx State cameras rolled throughout the season and got a chance to catch both Seattle and Denver on its trips to MetLife Stadium. Now the question remains, what kind of weather the first Big Apple Super Bowl will play host to? If these last few days are any indication, get ready for some frostbite on Super Sunday. We'll be rolling again at the big game, and even though my early prediction did not follow suit, Tune in next Friday for my mulligan. Hey, I got a 50% chance. I was right about the Tanaka sweepstakes, though. The New York Yankees got their man this week as we shift gears from the gridiron to the baseball diamond. Masaharu Tanaka, the Japanese star, right-handed pitcher, who went 24-0 with a 1.27 ERA last season, agreed to join the pinstripers on Wednesday. The 25-year-old signed a seven-year contract worth $155 million, his agent told ESPN. The contract includes an opt-out clause after the fourth year, and the Yankees will pay Tanaka's Japanese team a $20 million posting fee. As for the ace pitcher's deal, it's the largest contract ever for an international free agent and the fifth largest deal for a pitcher in Major League history. More on how his signing impacts the Yankees' rotation in the C-list. Time for some quick hitters. Boston Red Sox slugger Johnny Gomes is not impressed by the Yankees' spending spree, and he made comments this week calling them out and saying, we still got the belt. The Yankees may pursue Red Sox free agent shortstop Stephen Drew and see if they can have him play second base. Across town, Mets young ace Matt Harvey, who is recovering from surgery, said he hopes to return despite the team's wariness. On the football diamond, New York Giants quarterback Eli Manning is giving big brother Peyton some tips about the Meadowlands and MetLife Stadium. Hopefully, Eli is summoning his past greatness and not teaching his older brother how to throw picks at home. The younger Manning said he wouldn't publicly acknowledge some of his tips in order to keep Seattle from improving for the big game. Eli's skipper head coach Tom Coughlin said this week that he can coach well beyond 
2014. On the basketball diamond, the Brooklyn Nets will wear alternate sleeve jerseys for five upcoming games to pay homage to the Brooklyn Dodgers of old-time baseball fame. Former NBA player Clifford Robertson will join the cast of Survivor next season. LeBron James, Stephen Curry, and Kobe Bryant have been voted starters for next month's All-Star Game in New Orleans. However, Kobe, still recovering from injury, said he doesn't want to play in the game. Closer to home, the New York Knicks continue to fall at the Garden. The Knicks have lost five straight, including Wednesday night's defeat to Philadelphia at MSG. Tonight, the Orange and Blue will host Charlotte, Bronx boy Kimball Walker. The LA Lakers will then come to town on Sunday at MSG as the team's eight-game homestand continues. The Knicks will also be without Andrea Bargnani, who is out indefinitely with a torn ligament in his left elbow. On the bright side for the Knicks, Carmelo Anthony has been voted a starter for the All-Star game. He will represent the East. Anthony and Tyson Chandler are also part of the latest USA basketball pool. Meanwhile, the Nets have won eight of nine games in January, including a 101-90 victory over it. Orlando last time out. The Nets will host Dallas tonight in Brooklyn before traveling to Boston on Sunday. On a side note, Darren Williams has also been added to the pool for the USA Hoops team. And from the ice, the New York Rangers, New Jersey Devils, and the New York Islanders will all take part in the Winter Classic Series from Yankee Stadium. The Rangers and Devils get the action going this Sunday afternoon at the Big Ball Park in the Bronx. The Rangers fell 2-1 to one to St. Louis on Thursday night after topping the Islanders on Tuesday at the Garden. Those are the headlines. We hit the list for my take on Tanaka. We spoke about it recently on the program, making note of Brian Cashman's belief that the Yankees, prior to adding Tanaka, were an 80-plus win team. Now with the 25-year-old in the fold, the question will be, can he be a 15-win difference maker? Can this phenom ace take the Yankees into the 90-plus win category? And more importantly, can he lift the Yankees where it matters the most? October. I think Tanaka will be a huge difference maker, especially in his first season. I understand that the pressure will be paramount on the Japanese import, but I do believe he's in the same class as Texas's Yu Darvish, the last ace to make the jump from Japan. Darvish has excelled, albeit in a different media market with a much different culture in terms of what winning means to the Yankees and its fan base and what it means to every other team around baseball. Tanaka will be under the microscope, but besides the money, it seems like he really wanted to pitch here in the Bronx. He said this week that the Bronx Bombers wanted him the most and pursued him more than the other five teams that had expressed interest. He also received a call from 2009 World Series MVP and former Yankee star Hideki Matsui, which I'm sure aided in his decision as well. I expect Yankee fans will call for a 24-win season from Tanaka, but I'll sign up for an ace of the future and someone with a solid sub-3 RA and maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 wins, especially if a few of them come in the fall classic where the pinstripers were missed in 2013. We want to hear what you have to say. Hit me up on Facebook at Sports NYC or on Twitter at The Voice Bobby C and let me know what you expect from Tanaka. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay with us. More open coming up right after this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruben Diaz Jr. I'm not just the Bronx Borough President, but I'm a father and an uncle. I can't emphasize enough how important it is for men and fathers to be a part of their children's lives. Let me talk to you about a program that's come out of my office, the Bronx Fathers Taking Action Committee, which is a committee of Bronx fathers and men formed to help uplift the institution of fatherhood while responsibly respecting the privilege of being a dad. Our mission statement is to engage, empower, educate, and encourage fathers, grandfathers, and uncles of all ages by providing them with the resources and help that they need in order to build new relationships with the leaders in our community. Ultimately, this initiative will help reinforce Bronx men as positive role models. So, I just want to take the time out to encourage fathers, grandfathers, uncles, men of all corners of the Bronx to take an important role in the lives of the children in your family and in our community, and also to get involved in this uplifting committee. Good job, Theo. Thank Let's you. Let's start it again, Theo. All right. Long before I was in Hollywood, I had a grandmother by the name of Estelle Marie Tavis. 
positive role models to make sure that I was on a straight path. Big Brothers Big Sisters carefully screens volunteers and places them in long-term mentoring matches with kids who face adversity. With more volunteers, especially men, and more donations, every little who needs a big can have it. Start something. If it's been a while since you've been involved, start something again. Learn more at BigBrothersBigSisters.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Grand finale of the show, our Open Artist Spotlight. The Open Artist Spotlight is made possible in part with public funds from the Bronx Council on the Arts through the New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Program. Rapper's Delight, a hip-hop cooking show, is a fun and fresh mix of hip-hop culture in the culinary community. On set, we have the chef host and author of Rapper's Delight, Cache Chanel, to show us a recipe straight from her cookbook. Please welcome Cache Chanel. Hi. Hi. So happy to be here. We are happy to have you. Okay, so today we're making my street dreams spinach strawberry salad. I figured this would be a great recipe. It's the new year. It's time for a new you. Time yes. to get our sexy figures back, right? Yes. Time to get those bikini bodies. Yes. So I'm going to start off with making the salad dressing first. Okay. And first, I just want to say that you don't have to buy bottled dressing. So many people buy bottled dressing. You can make your own dressing. Simple. One to three is the ratio. One part um, vinegar, three parts oil. Put in whatever flavors you like. Boom. You have salad dressing. All right. So okay. is it better to use um, like balsamic vinegar? Because I hear that balsamic vinegar is healthier. Is that true? or? Well, you can use any kind of vinegar like um i use apple cider vinegar champagne vinegar um balsamic sometimes i don't even use vinegar sometimes i use citrus instead to balance out the acidic okay um in the dressing so it's whatever you like whatever your taste are you uh, can have fun in the kitchen nice you know? okay so what i'm just going to start off and i'm just going to pour about mm, half a cup into my salad dressing maker, okay. what I like to call it. And then I'm going to put in about a half a cup, a cup and a half right. of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Okay. And then we are going to add some honey. I already have a tablespoon of sugar in here. Okay. Just because I like a little sweetness. Okay. Um, in my salad dressing. I'm going to add three tablespoons of honey okay. straight into the bottle. Mm -hmm. Do you like honey? I love honey. You can also use agave nectar as well. Nice. Okay, it has a lower glycemic um, index, so if you have diabetes or if you're, you know, you're watching your sugar intake, um, agave would be great as well. Okay, so let's just get that in there. 
All right, we're this done is with really that. good. This is good that you really brought healthy quick. food. It's really, really quick. It's and really, really quick. I'm really excited so that she's teaching us how to make all, your own homemade dressing. Yes. yes, and it's healthy. It's healthy, and you know what's in it. You know when you look at the box, the back of the bottle of the dressing, you're like, what is sodium glutarite? What? What yes. to the left? <laughs> you know, what? you can't even pronounce it exactly. But we're sitting there with you like your exactly own. Exactly. You to Google all these. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and then once you once you Google them, then they have other things that are like what. That. Exactly. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? Yeah, no, well, <laughs> not if you know how to make it yourself, which is what we're doing right now. That's right. All so, right, so um, you did that really quick, but mm -hmm. it looks like you did like a half a cup of olive oil, half a cup, I, half a cup of vinegar. You put three cups of uh, honey. Yep, I put three I put three tablespoons of honey. I just have a small, half of a small chopped onion that I'm going to put in here. Okay. And, um, excuse me, I'm no, going to add some garlic. About mm, two teaspoons right on in here from the jar you have everything i love in you like there. garlic every garlic i love garlic. onions honey i can only imagine i think i'm just gonna drink the <laughs> by all means <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna put a little bit of a crushed red pepper in here about a half a teaspoon because i like a little kick right um, so you know while we're doing this like let's talk about how you learned all of this well you know what my grandmother is the foundation for my culinary um skill set right and then Plain old trial and error. Getting in the kitchen, burning things, making mistakes. That's how you learn, right? I put a little bit of uh, soy sauce in there so you don't need any salt. And I'm going to add a couple of dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like my daughter. Then, <laughs> okay. I mean, not that she knows how to say Worcestershire, but, you know, <laughs> if she did, she'd say it like that. <laughs> See? Voila. Voila. Now we have salad dressing. This okay. is my balsamic mm -hmm. honey salad dressing, okay? So we're just going to give it a little shake. Put a little shoulder into it if you like. So, you know, just talking about that, you learned a lot of this from your grandmother, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the kitchen is usually where a lot of family secrets are given yes. away, where a lot of quality family time is spent yes. together. So yes. how much yes. time yes. did you spend in the kitchen, and how old were you when you started? Um, I started cooking with my grandmother when I was about eight or nine, and it started, I was a latchkey kid. So, you know, my mom went to school, I mean, she went to school for her master's degree, and then she was working during the day. So I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. So the way that we would bond, I would just help her cook. You know, I was her grandbaby, and, you know, she just taught me all the southern secrets. She's from South Carolina, so I make a macaroni and cheese and make you want to smack your mama, honey. Oh, no, you and I are so going to be good friends, you know. <laughs> a macaroni and cheese that make you want to smack your mama. That's right. It's on you. 100,000 views on YouTube and counting every single day. So. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, so our dressing is done. Okay. Right here, I have about four cups of fresh spinach, okay? Mm-hmm. And we have, if you can help me and pour, that's about uh, a cup and a half to two cups of fresh strawberries. Okay, so. We're going to just pour it in there. Pour it, dump it all in. Just dump just it. Just dump it all in. All right. We're okay. Just, strawberries and salad, I don't think I've ever had that. Oh, it's so good. And with the balsamic, um, the balsamic honey dressing, mm -mm -mm. it's going to take it to another level. Okay. And see, I have strawberries because I love strawberries, but if you have other fruits at home, that you want to just dump in. If you have blueberries, raspberries, apples, it'll work just as fine. But you know what's really good is that strawberries is considered like a superfood, oh, right? Yeah. Because of the antioxidants. Oh, yeah. Because so, we're on a health kick here. Oh, so yeah. I just want to oh, share yeah. that with oh, everybody. Yeah. Like, this truly flushes your system. Oh, yeah. And so, it's filled with fiber as right. well. So it keeps you healthy. I mean, well, it keeps you full. You know, healthy food. Right. I have about mm, a cup of grilled chicken. You can just pour that in there. Grilled chicken. I'm the assistant today. Boom. You're my sous chef. Mm -hmm. Oh, sous chef. <laughs> I like that. I have a that, that, that deserves a sookie sookie. <laughs> sookie sookie. Yeah, I'm the sous chef. I have some feta cheese here. Now, I know you're not a big fan of feta mm, cheese. Yeah. But mm. when I tell you, it will take this salad to another level. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. Okay. Just a little bit, okay? All right. Just okay. a little bit. And, it, and the white contrasts with the red and green so okay. well. Okay. I know you don't want any more, right. so I won't do that. Yeah. And just to add some crunch, right. I have some sliced honey uh, almonds. almonds. So we're just going to, you know what, just pour them in there. About a half a cup. Okay. We're going to do that. Okay. And then we're just going to add the dressing. Okay, okay? let's do it. Because shake, 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 shake. I want to make sure we eat this before the show ends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo. So we're just going to pour just about mm, half a cup, a cup in there. It looks so beautiful. I just want to show that to everybody. Can you see that? It looks so beautiful. 
Yes. Even better. I can only imagine. Don't you wish you had smell a vision? Oh they my wish they had smell a vision. Right? Smell a vision. <laughs> smell a vision. Only it's you so can smell this. Right Seriously, right it now. does. I know it's just a salad, and you're probably like, oh, it's just a salad, but it's not. It's, it's not. It's what not, she it's put not. in it, and it's also the dressing that she made. It's vibrant. I mean, it is like the aroma is kicking it's over amazing. here in, in a good way, of course. Okay, so I'm just going to serve you up some. Okay. Let's get you some straw. And chicken. Some chicken. Even get that protein in there. Protein. <laughs> okay. So here you go, my top. Thank you. Please. And I'm going to fix me some too. Okay, fix yourself some okay. too because um, they're, we're running out of time. And I want to make sure that people know that you have a cookbook, right? Yes, my The Rapper's book. Delight. Rapper's Delight, the hip-hop cookbook. You can get it on blurb.com, amazon.com, and coming soon, cachechanel.com. So you guys can look out for that. And you also on YouTube. She actually has some of these recipes on YouTube. I do. Yeah. Rappers Delight, like the hip hop cooking show, is on YouTube on my YouTube channel, Cache Chanel TV. And um, it's a great show where we have MCs come in, they cook with me, and then they dish on what's their newest projects. We have a DJ in the kitchen. We have a lot, a lot of fun. Okay? Nice. Like, we're going to have a lot of fun right now. Eating Singing a salad. You honey. know it. You know it. First thing in the morning. What do you call this dish? This is our. Street Dreams Strawberry Spinach. Street Dreams Strawberry salad. Spinach Salad. Oh, it's so good when you taste <laughs> the strawberries with the balsamic honey dressing. It's delicious, guys. It's delicious. It is so delicious. <laughs> so juicy. I don't think I've ever considered. <laughs> I don't think I've ever considered having strawberries in my salad, but this is definitely a keeper. I told you. You are so right. And this is in my book, Rappers Delight, like the Hip Hop Cookbook, so you guys check it out. Well, thank you for being here with us, Keshe. Thank you for having me. And thank you for shedding some positive light with your street spinach salad. <laughs> <laughs> no, street, it seemed to be the theme for today. Street you know? dreams, street dreams. Dream. Shout dream. out to Nas, yeah, one of my favorite MCs. So do you want to share with the rest of the guests? So that, well, I say goodbye, we can actually invite them. Do we have enough to say? Mm, yeah, no. <laughs> guys, so come on, come on, All get right. some salad. Well, come this way, come around this way, because I have to say goodbye salad, to everybody. Yeah. Thank you for Ooh, having me. Thank you for being here. Thanks All for right. watching. All right, once again, you guys, you can check her show out on YouTube.com, Cash. Cache Chanel, and you can find her cookbook at Amazon.com and Blurb.com. That's right. And as we say in showbiz, that is a wrap, people. That is our show today. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. Be sure to check out the Recablecast tonight throughout the weekend here on Broxnet and 24 hours a day at Broxnet.org. Once again, I'm Rina Valentin, and from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide peace, prosperity, and love. Adios! Woo! Streets!